Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and what we've got in this one before I play it is a Witch Queen interactive trailer. And mostly what this is going to be is a history of the Hive. So if you're not too deep into the lore, haven't watched all of Bife's videos, and not entirely sure what's going on with the story, why Savathun is where she is, or what the history of her and her brothers, any of brother and sister I should say, is, this is actually a cool way to cover it. So they state, Guardian, to defeat your enemy, you must first know them. So the rise of Savathun is a tale of deceit, of power corrupted, and truth bent to serve nefarious ends. In this interactive trailer, you'll learn everything the Vanguard knows about the history of Savathun and her rise to power. Be sure to click on the nodes that appear throughout the video for additional crucial info. As you prepare to take up arms against the Witch Queen and her lucent brood, remember, even the smallest insight into your foe could be the key to taking back the light. This is basically going to be a trailer. It plays through. I'm going to basically pause it in certain sections because you've got these little interactive nodes that bring up more. I'm going to read everything out so you can listen to this in the background if you want to. But this is going to be a quick history on the Hive. Pretty compacted. I think they did a decent job on making it pretty digestible. So here we go. I can't make it full screen. I don't know why. In times of crisis, people look to their leaders for answers. But ever since the planets were ripped from our sky... It seems all I can offer are more questions. I hardly know where to start. Savathun, the Witch Queen. Hive god of cunning and lies. Hive legend tells us she was born on a hostile... So, Hive Gods were all born on, all the Hive Gods, they are gods now, but the Hive were born on the planet Fundament. Uh, it was an inhospitable gas giant and the birthplace of a proto-Hive species eons ago. They were weak, defenseless species, having to contend with poisonous rain, toxic oceans, and predators such as Stormjoys, quote, living clouds that lowered deadly tentacles tipped with bait stars to entice their prey. With such a hostile environment, it is no wonder that the ancestors of the Hive were so desperate to find a way to survive. You know, bargain with the devil, be careful what you get. Born on a hostile, far-off planet, where she would have lived a short, uneventful life. If it weren't for the worm familiar that warned of an impending cataclysm. And so, she led her siblings into the depths, where the ancient worm gods offered them immeasurable power. So, um, this is where... And I'm not going to do this complete justice, but if you don't know much about the Hive, now you're going to going into Witch Queen. So that's kind of the point of me recording this. Uh, the Worm Gods we've seen on the left, if you didn't play the Warmind expansion, uh, we did fight Zal, who was a worm god, a Hive Worm God who was basically buried in Mars. Um, we ended up fighting, killing that Worm God, a Worm God. I know it seems ridiculous. We beat it basically in the final mission of the campaign and also what was a strike, but it was Oryx, which was A-U-R-Y-X. I think it was pronounced diff or spelled differently. And now we've actually got Oryx, O-R-Y-X, because I think he they were all sisters. And then kind of he switched to be a brother, kind of wanted to be king, I guess, and ruler. But you also have Savathun and Zivorath. Zivorath is still in the background. Zivorath is still hunting Savathun. And I think Zivorath is potentially working with the darkness now. Savathun's kind of in this weird transition to go from light to dark. And I talk about that in the throne world. So the Worm Gods, diving into the depths of Fundament, the Proto-Hive made a terrible covenant with the Worm Gods, Akka, Ayer, Yul, Ur, and Zal. Zal is the one we killed. Each member of the Hive lives in symbiosis with a Worm Larva, which grants them darkness-based powers in exchange for being, quote, fed with a constant supply of violence and destruction. So they get their powers supplied by violence and destruction, hence why they're constantly doing what they're doing. But in this pact lies the Hive's greatest weakness, for as the Worm feeds its it grows in power, which of course they enjoy, but also it's hunger. And if the hive fail to satisfy its worm, the hungry parasite will devour its own host instead. So to satiate their parasite, they have to get more and more and more violence destruction to feed their worm. In exchange for endless blood tribute. From this, the hive were born. And countless civilizations were condemned to extinction. Now, I will say, you can see the Vanguard investigations. There's these little numbers. It's 12.6.8.2214. Now, I don't know if that's like day, month, year, or anything of that nature. The next one is like the mass of chlorine. And we've had all these alchemical and elements and electron configurations on all of these things have been there. 
but this one can't quite decipher as of recording this video. So if you do figure it out, comment below so more people can know. But as of right now, I don't know what that one is. For untold ages, they devoured life and light wherever it could be found, facing little resistance. After the death of her brother, Oryx. Okay, so sibling death, disappearance. So we killed Oryx, actually. Um, Savathun went into hiding. Hold on. So, Oryx, the Taken King, fought him in Destiny 1. The first major expansion, or basically the second year of Destiny, was the Taken King, and our fight against him where we killed him at the end of the King's Fall raid. Oryx, the Taken King, was brother to the Witch Queen, Savathun. After killing the Worm Guard, Akka, Oryx learned the power to take, an ability that allowed him to bend other beings to his will. After the death of his son, Crota, Oryx came to Saul to seek vengeance on the Guardians, but they defeated him within the Ascendant Plane, thereby destroying him and ending his reign forever. So we killed him, we fought him in the Regicide mission, killed him there, he went to his Ascendant Realm, we went into the Ascendant Realm, and actually killed Oryx at the end of the raid when he was in still one of the coolest boss forms that we've probably fought in Destiny. That was a major piece, but he is, of course, Savathun dead. Savathun went into hiding. We know Savathun went into hiding. During her years in hiding, Savathun found even more devious ways to destroy her enemies and amass power. She gained strength throughout a curse on the Awoken Stronghold, the Dreaming City. A lot of people have called this the Death Battery. This is why. Where a time-looping battle, you have the three-week continuous cycle of the Dreaming City. And if we are ever going to break the Dreaming City out of that three-week cycle, something with Savathun has to free that. Feels like what has to happen. So I don't quite know how that's all going to turn out, but that is why there's a three-week cycle where we go through, we fight the uh, dungeon boss, and then the boss like recreates, and then we go back again. It's this weird cycle, but all of that continuous non-stop death and destruction is feeding Savathun's worm, making it more and more and more powerful. Also, on the moon, she convinced the granddaughters of Oryx to build and defend the Scarlet Keep Fortress, knowing it would lure guardians and who would then destroy what remained of her brother's bloodline. So this, in theory, was Savathun saying, hey, this would be a cool idea for you to build the Scarlet Keep. Also, when you do this, I know behind the scenes that the Guardians are going to come find you, destroy you, and my brother's bloodline is going to be no longer. We still have Zivu or Wrath in the background. This was mostly focused on Oryx right now. Not out of fear, of course. But Before we go too far, in the Interference missions, this was Season of Arrival. So this would be Season 11? 12, 13, 14, 15, yeah. This was season 11, so this was before the launch of Beyond Light. The arrival of the pyramid ships, which we knew they were kind of sitting in the skyboxes of each of the planets that they were on, and then when the actual season ended and before we went into Beyond Light, the actual pyramid ships we saw in the director kind of overtook the directory and kind of blacked out all of those exterior planets. So the arrival of the pyramid ships drew Savathun out of hiding to interfere with their signal, she says interfere. She objects, however, to the implication of obtrusion, claiming that she was merely protecting humanity. She always has an ulterior motive, so nobody believes her, of course. Whether she wanted, whether sh she was or not remains unclear, but her middling did leave something tangible on Io, the Tree of Silver Wings, a mysterious ent entity that embodied both the light and darkness. Eris Morn studied the tree for clues on its paracausal heritage, but sadly, her investigation abruptly ended on I when Io, like many moons and planets of Sol, suddenly disappeared. And I wish they had a way in-game for you to go back and see like what that event was like. Just go play the cinematic. That stuff should be in-game. Kind of wish it was, but that was when the directory got overtaken by, like the darkness spirals, you couldn't access the planets anymore when the big directory shift happened. I tried to protect you from the Black Fleet. You called it interference. That's her basically claim. She was trying to protect us from the Black Fleet of Pyramid Ships. We called it interference. She was trying to help. We still don't entirely know who's being correct. But out of strategy, because Savathun knows the best way to beat your enemy is to join them. So we know at the start of basically Season of the Hunt, and I think almost from nearly that point uh, that we saw... Osiris that Savathun was impersonating Osiris from nearly what we've seen him for this entire year. Um, and we didn't officially really know that until the start of Season of the Lost when it was finally came out, and then Savathun's now in the crystal form. But during most of this year, Savathun has been impersonated by Osiris. 
So Osiris is a legendary warlock and a controversial figure among humanity due to his teachings and research. He notably discovered the infinite forest and helped to save Titan Saint-14 from almost certain death. Basically, it was a story to bring back uh, Saint-14. That's also when we got trials for the first time. So I will give Bungie credit for this. When you bring mechanics into the game and they put lore behind it, there's that's not an easy thing to do. You can just say, hey, Trials is back. They build an entire season and story around bringing Trials back and getting the lighthouse lit again. It was actually kind of cool. There were some ups and downs to it, but it's still cool to see when you think about the lore of bringing something like that back and why they did what they did. Much later, when Osiris was seemingly betrayed by the... Uh, when Osiris seemingly betrayed the last city by conspiring to destroy the House of Light, it was revealed that Savathun had been posing as the famed warlock to spread sedition. When I lived as Osiris, I saw your world through human eyes. I've always been a student of humanity, but to live among you was a new delight. In her greatest trick yet, she infiltrated the Vanguard. Weakening us from within and stealing our most sacred resource. Okay. So Savathun was imprisoned. We know that at the start of Season of Lost. That's what the whole season's been about with her and kind of this chrysalis, basically. Uh, prior to her theft of the light, Savathun was captured and imprisoned in a crystalline structure by Mara Sav, the Awoken Queen. Savathun struck a bargain with Mara, remove her worm, and Savathun would return the real Osiris and lend her assistance against the Black Fleet. Mara accepted, knowing she would have a chance to kill Savathun upon separation from her worm, but Savathun has never been one to let others decide her fate. So just because Mara thinks she's going to have a chance to do something, Osiris, Savathun is typically about seven steps ahead, generally, in a lot of this stuff, so she probably has a plan, and we know the Witch Queen is coming, so obviously she's not going to die. Is anybody going to die? Still don't know. The one thing we thought she could never touch. Blight. <clears throat> Stealing our power. Lost Guardians, it's unclear how Savathun has stolen the light, but one theory pervades. Some years ago, a fire team led by Exo Warlock Ty Tycho 3 traveled to the new Pacific Arcology on Titan, a planet that's not in the game right now, but was previously in Destiny 2, uh, to stop the Hive summoning ritual. They failed, and the Hive, led by a shrieker known as Savathun's Song, killed the fire team and transformed them into crystals containing void light. Such access to an aspect of the light may have given Savathun the opportunity to seize a newfound power, but like much of Savathun, but like so much with Savathun, this remains a mystery. And I saw something on Twitter where somebody basically said, theoretically, if the void crystals that they she uh, Savathun has access to from these lost guardians from the whole Titan situation, if this is the reason we're getting void 3.0, again, Bungie building lore into where you have character mechanics, if there's any lore implications behind all of this, again, very cool that they're just, like, putting that much effort in. Can't give them credit that they're not trying. The light. The questions just keep piling up. It seems the answers are buried within Savathun's throne world. So, Savathun's Throne World, which is going to be the new destination in Witch Queen, the seat of her power, Savathun's Throne World is a haunting, surreal realm. There are two distinct regions, a darkness-infused area containing a swampland and a pyramid ship. We've seen the swampland, the pyramid ship, what looks kind of to be like cavernous, fiery, cave, not positive-looking area. Then, on the other side, uh, which reflects the past she claims to have left behind, and a surreal, new, light-transformed area, home to her palace and gardens, which embodies the future she desires, a future the Vanguard cannot allow to pass. And I'm actually very curious if she is able to succeed in acquiring light, uh, if she's able to keep it, if she becomes an ally, if she's still going to be a villain. She's very trickery. She's always looking out for herself. I don't know if she would ever actually ally with us or just use us for a tool for some greater good. We have two more years of expansions after this. But still, this is you're literally seeing it's a representation of her mind and horror kind of personality going from this swampy darkness. There's literally a pyramid ship in her throne world, which is just part of her th mind, theoretically. And you have the juxtaposition to the white, very pristine palace area. It's very different worlds. And as you can see, it's representing her potential transformation from darkness to light. Are we going to let her embrace the light? Honestly, don't know. I'm very curious to see where this all goes. I need someone to go in and dig them up. 
So we've got the Lucent Hive, the fruits of Savathun's theft, also known as the Lucent Brood. These hive warriors are fiercely loyal to Savathun and use the Traveler's Light to extract her destructive ends. Guardians who meet them will face solar-infused acolytes, wizards who shoot bolts of arc energy, and knights who battle behind a sentinel shield, and hive ghosts capable of bringing them all back from the dead. Encountering enemies with begs the question, how will guardians defeat a foe with their own abilities? Savathun's throne world is a nexus of power. And this is the other number, 34.453. Shout out to uh, Rook in chat. That is the atomic weight for chlorine. So we've had just multiple elements. You've got NaCl, so you've, that's like salt. We've had that before, so sodium chloride. We've had sulfur, osmiums, electron configuration, which isn't an element, but it's something else. Um, so there's a whole lot of elementalness behind all of this. I'm curious if that all pays off or it's just kind of the way the world is built. And it's actually down here in the corner, which you probably can't see because I'm covering it. But that XE4 F14 5D 10 6 S2, that's the electron configuration for Osmium. And the lore behind the hive is actually based on the Osmium dynasty. Go look that up and you'll probably trip over about 70 of Bife's videos. But that's where some of those numbers come from. NACL up here in the corner, 80, 22 point or 200.59. I think that's sulfur. So it's all a lot of this chemical stuff. Is there anything on there's 20, 200.59, hive slide, APX, and you. There's a whole lot of numbers. I'm curious if anybody like deciphers all of this. There's a bunch of crap up top. I don't know if it's there the whole time. Yeah, it is there the whole time. Um, so you've got two, 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 uh, film scan, focal scanner. Somebody's going to go through some of these numbers and decipher it. I don't know of everything, but those are the little things you'll see a lot of around here. You've got elemental weights and elemental abbreviations. You've got con elemental configurations and things of that nature. This throne world is a nexus of power. I'd be shocked if her brood didn't exploit that as often as possible. If my instincts are correct. Find out how Savathun stole the light. Deep Sight, a power derived from darkness. Deep Sight allows its wielder to see through the illusions of Savathun's throne world. So again, this is somewhere where the darkness is giving assistance to Guardians to face Savathun. Big questions is should we be embracing the darkness at all? Although its usage has deem is deemed necessary, some guardians have their fears. The door of the darkness was opened on Europa. By embracing Deep Sight inviting in another dark power, will guardians ever be able to truly shut this door again? This ability could be just what we need to solve this case. Remember, Guardian, Savathun's strategy rests on knowing more than anyone else. They'll find out what she plans. Obviously, we've got a lot of major, major players. We've got Ikora, Zavala, Eris... Uh, Marasov, also in the trailer that we saw recently during the Witch Queen Vidoc. You've got Anna Bray sitting in like one of the like cinematic shacks, Saladin. Everybody seems to be involved in this thing. It's actually impressive how many characters, basically except the Drifter and Elstie, are the main two who are kind of left out. Saint 14's in there too. On her ability to twist lies and cast confusion. And it's our goal. But now, Take back the light. We can turn the tables on her. And that is pretty much where it wraps up. So that is kind of the interactive trailer, but that is also history for a lot of you over the hive. I probably did a few things in justice. If I got anything very terribly wrong, fix that in the comments for me, everybody. But if you enjoyed this video, a little history on the hive, a little reason as to why we are where we are in the story of Destiny and what kind of the implications both are of facing Savathun in her throne world, dealing with the Lucent Brood. We have Hive Guardians now and kind of the story of how we got there. So if you enjoyed this video, drop a like below. Leave a comment if you've got questions or any thoughts about everything that was said. If I was just completely wrong in something, feel free to correct me. If you want to find me on Twitter, at EasyBontis. On Twitch, it is EasyBontis, where I streamed this live. Shout out to all of Twitch chat right now. And for everybody here on YouTube, if you enjoyed this one, drop a like, hit that, or as I said, find, hit the subscribe button. And of course, if you want to see future videos from me, of which there are going to be a lot of those with Witch Queen coming up, hit that alert bell next to the subscribe button. That way you don't miss them. I'll see you soon. Have a good one.